This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, in this video let us see how did I manage a case of PC tear in an eye with postipolar cataract. There is a PC tear with possible vitreous disturbance. There is cortex as well. How should we approach the situation? What should be our priorities? Let us see the step-by-step -step approach which I took in this particular case. He is a 60-year-old man with a classical postipolar cataract with a high probability of a pre-existing weak posterior capsule, very much vulnerable for an intraoperative PC tear. With all the precautions taken, the posterior capsule was breached. This was uh, obvious during the epinucleus removal and at this moment, I'm suspecting vitreous prolapse as well. So the situation is, there is a PC tear with possible vitreous prolapse. I'm not sure of the size of the posterior capsule tear as there is overlying lens matter and cortex. To address this situation first, I'd like to prioritize my goals. Number one would be probably the most important one to avoid any pulling at the prolapsed vitreous. This will prevent any traction at the vitreous base. For this, I need to diagnose the vitreous prolapse, identify it and deal with it by doing antivitrectomy. Number two would be then to deal with the lens mat and the cortex. Number three would be to prevent enlargement of the PC tear and an attempt to do a posterior capsule rexis if possible. And lastly, place the intraocular lens. The most important and my first priority is to deal with the prolapse vitreous. The vitreous is identified by using diluted tramsulin acetate. The bottle height is kept quite low, just enough to maintain the chamber. The cutter is placed behind the PC tear with its bevel facing anteriorly. And as soon as the vitrector is put on, we can see the anteriorly prolapsed vitreous being cut and aspirated to the cutter's port. By keeping the cutter beneath the level of the PC tear and using a very low bottle height for irrigation, we can minimize the chances of the enlargement of the PC tear. Once the connections between the posteriorly prolapsing vitreous is cut, these anterior cut strands of vitreous are removed later by moving the vitrector up in front. Once the vitreous around the vicinity of the bag is completely removed, I would have achieved the first goal that is to avoid any traction of the vitreous base. Now I can venture to aspirate the cortex. I use the cutter itself in aspiration mode to remove the cortex and then again switch to cutter mode if at all there is a suspicion of vitreous prolapse. For better control and access, I'm using bimanual aspiration cannula to aspirate out the remaining cortex. Before switching hands, OVD is injected into the chamber to prevent it from collapsing. The cortex from the other quadrant is then aspirated out. I'm suspicious about the presence of some vitreous fibers here, so I go back to my vitrector to clean up this area. My next goal is to prevent the enlargement of the PC tear. Because the edges are ragged, this tear is vulnerable to enlarge during further maneuvers of cortex removal. This can be achieved by getting a PCC that is a posterior capsule rexis. After removing the vitreous around the tear, the torn edge is held and the calvilinear tear is attempted. The visibility is not great because of the poor centration, my apologies. Now the remaining cortex is aspirated. Because the visibility is better now, I can identify the edge and the posterior capsule axis is completed now. The cutter is used to complete the anterior vitrectomy. Time to place the intraocular lens. I've decided to go in with sulcus placement of a multi-piece IOL with optic capture instead of in the back placement of a single piece IOL simply because the posterior capsule rexis size was too large for my liking. I prefer to use sodium hyaluronate to create space between the iris and the anterior capsule. The distal haptic goes in first over the iris in the sulcus followed by the trailing haptic. 
time to remove the OVD. Please note the bottle height again as the irrigation handpiece enters the antechamber, it's kept very low. Going in with a high irrigation pressure can sometime suddenly deepen the chamber and it is possible to displace the intraocular lens. The vitrector is again used to remove all the OVD which has been pushed into the vitreous cavity behind the lens and also the OVD in front of the lens is aspirated out. The lens is tipped up with the irrigation cannula to wash off all the OVD which is sticking on to it. Finally, it's time to achieve the optic capture. The irrigation cannula is in my left hand. Using the Sinsky hook in my right, the optic is pushed down so that the optic gets trapped behind the rexus margin. The ovalization of the rexus is a sign of a successful optic capture. The side ports are then hydrated. Intracameral antibiotics are used. And these are the post-op pictures. As a protocol for the eye which has had a PC tear, uh, this eye too will undergo periodic peripheral retinal evaluation and OCT macula. Currently the retina is fine. So let's summarize. In the situation wherein we have a PC tear with vitreous prolapsed with retained lens matter in the bag, we need to prioritize the order in which things are dealt with. The first important priority or goal is to deal with the prolapsed vitreous. This has to get the first priority because any maneuvering in the antechamber with vitreous is going to induce traction of the vitreous space, which is what we don't want. So Tramson acetate is used to identify the prolapsed vitreous first and followed by antivitrectomy using the right technique. After clearing the vitreous only, then is the cortex dealt with. And at the earliest opportunity, the posterior capsule tear is converted into a posterior capsule rexus. This will minimize the chances of enlargement of the tear in an uncontrolled manner. So after dealing with the vitreous, the cortex and the posterior capsule in this order, finally it's time to implant the lens. So to conclude, having a clear game plan with appropriate goals based on sound principles will help us to conquer these adverse situations. Thank you so much for your attention and hope you found this helpful.